times, at times, people go through hardship, so much hardship to believe that there is no God, that there is no Jesus, because of what they are going through. Wondering, where is God if I'm going through this? In the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 1 to 6, if you read there, John the Baptist, even after being prophesied that he would prepare the way for the coming of Jesus, it was long process, pro, prophesied in the Bible that John the Baptist would prepare the way for the coming of Christ. And we remember even when Jesus came, John the Baptist baptized Jesus. Even after doing all this, John the Baptist doubted that Jesus was the true Messiah. He doubted that Jesus was the one who was prophesied, the, the, the Savior who will come to save the world. Why did John doubt Jesus, that is the true Jesus who was prophesied to come? Because he was in prison and going through hardship and trials. The hardship and trials in prison made him to think there is no Jesus in the world at the moment that was said will come. If you read in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 1 to 6, John sent his messenger to Jesus. He heard that Jesus was nearby preaching and doing a lot of miracles. He sent them and told them, can you go and ask Jesus, is he the one who was prophesied to come or there is another Messiah coming? To my thinking, what John was thinking in his mind, why am I in prison? I should be living in a lot of comfort. If you read the book of Acts 14.22, Paul and Barnabas were encouraging believers and telling them that, they were encouraging them, telling them that we enter heaven through many hardship and trials, encouraging them to remain firm in Christ, not to be discouraged by tribulation and trials. John the Baptist, he sent his messenger to ask Jesus, are you the one or there's another Jesus come? In the, in the verse 3 of chapter 11 of Matthew, Matthew 11 chapter 3, go and ask Jesus, is he the one Messiah or there's another Messiah coming? Then when you read verse 4, so he asked them, is he the one who was coming or there's another? If you read verse 4 to 5, Jesus after being told the message from John, he sent them back and told them, go and tell John that a lot of miracles are happening. Though he is doubting me, though John is doubting that uh, I am the true Messiah, a lot of miracles are happening, people are getting healed. He, he said that blind are receiving sight, lame are walking, deaf are hearing, reprocy are being healed, people with the leprosy, gospel is being preached to the poor. And in other words, Jesus was telling his messenger, go and tell him what miracle I'm doing, even though he's doubting. And when you read verse 6 of Matthew 11, verse 6, Jesus said that, blessed is the one who does not uh, get affected or fall away or stumble because of Jesus. Because Jesus, even he said that, in this world, you will face many trials, but I have already overcome. So Jesus was saying in Matthew 11 verse 6 that, Blessed is the one who does not doubt Jesus, or stumble on the way because he received a lot of trial and tribulation, thinking there is no God and a giver. So, there is a um, main focus of this message is that we should not give up because of trials and tribulation, because God is there, Jesus is there. And the enemy want to bring trials, so you give up. And most of the time, the enemy does not want to see anything holy in you. When you see revival in you, holiness in you, he increases the warfare. So you forget to continue living in purity and prayer and fasting. You focus on the tribulation and trials. Remember Paul and Sila when they were in jail, I think in the book of Acts chapter 16. When they were in jail, Paul and Sira, they did not consider the prison war. They did not consider they were in jail. They did not consider they were put in jail. They continued singing praises and worship and praying, and the jail door opened. The chain of the prison and the door opened, and they were released. When Peter was in prison, 
Peony Peter was in prison. The church prayed and he was released. The main message is that we should not focus on what the enemy is doing or trials are doing because the trials, uh, to the side of the enemy, he wants us to give up. We focus on the trials. But to Jesus, when you read the book of uh, James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, he says that um, enjoy hardship and trials as a pathway to Christian maturity and growth. That trials, when we persevere through trials and hardship, they bring maturity in our Christian journey and also in growth as Christian. So we should never give up because of trials. Remember Jesus said in this world, if you are true, honest, believing Christian, if you are honest, you have a heart for God like David, you really have a heart to live holiness. The Bible says, blessed are they that hunger for righteousness because this righteousness, they will be given, they will be filled with the righteousness. There's a song uh, 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 a singer called um, uh, Kobe in the USA say, fill me up. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, if, I think chapter 5 or 6, that if you hunger for righteousness, you will be filled. The enemy does not want to see any hunger for righteousness in you. Instead, you bring trials, hardship to make you give up and stop hungering, like through prayer and fasting, you keep focusing on the trial. But to Jesus, James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, these trials, they are for our growth and maturity as Christians. Uh, another verse that in the Bible that I emphasize we don't give up is uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. It says that, persevere as Christian. And let's put away everything that is hindering us. Like trials are hindrance. They are distractor, trials and hardship. They want you focus on them. They distract you from the cosmos. Verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 12 says, Take, remove away everything that uh, distracts you from the pathway. Get rid of it. Like hardship, focus on praise and worship and doing the work of God. When you read verse 2 to 3, it says, Persevere and consider Jesus. Consider Jesus. He was opposed by everyone. And endure the cross and scorning of the cross. Knowing the joy set before him. Jesus, knowing the joy set before him. That after this, I will be the king of all these people. I will be the Lord of all these people. I will be the king of kings and Lord of lords. As the Bible say in the Revelation 19.16. That he, is the, he wear the victor crown. He is the king of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus knowing that he will be the king of kings and Lord of lords. He persevered the hardship of the cross. And being rejected by everyone. So the Bible say in Hebrews 12 verse uh, 1 to 3. Or ex uh, emphasizing on verse 3, consider Jesus. How much he endured and you don't give up. He was, com he was even called, when you read the book of Matthew 27, he was called the most deceiving prophet. Or, or uh, he was spreading the most deception that have ever been had. He was rejected by all and uh, put together with the sinners and hung on the cross which was a curse during those days and he didn't give up because he knew it's because of what is ahead of me it's because of the victory that is ahead of me all these are coming we should not give up because of the trials and hardship because they bring perseverance and maturity in they bring maturity and growth in christianity john the baptist doubted the, uh, that jesus is the true messiah because he was in prison he was thinking they, that uh, he was seeing in another way that, uh, that if, uh, for example, president, how can my president make me be in prison? He was like, even when people, Jesus were thinking he is the king, and um, they thought Jesus is a physical king when they put carpet on him, like red carpet. I think he was entering uh, a certain city and they put uh, branch branches uh, as carpet, thinking like the way you put carpet to president he thinking he's a physical king but jesus was spiritual king he doesn't need uh honor like we see president being with a lot of uh, glory and a lot of security so as we finish this message always endure hardship 
as a pathway to maturity as a Christian. Don't give up because of what is happening to you. It's because you are on the right track. That's why the trial comes. If you do, most of the time, when things are, when you are on the long way, the air is still. When in the long way, you're not going the right path, it is quiet. But when you are going on the right path, when the blessing is on your side, the war are so great. When you're doing well, there is a lot of warfare. Especially when you're doing well in spirituality, in the area of spirituality as a Christian. Don't give up if you are Christian there of what you are going through. Remember, if the enemy attacked your family, if the enemy destroyed your family, or made your family to, to finish, if you are going, if you are busy, if, if every time the enemy have done anything in your life as a Christian, his aim is you don't reach heaven. He wants you to give up because of hardship to fail your destiny. If your marriage was failed as a Christian, if anything was attacked like job, everything was attacked for job. The main reason, how can I make this person not reach heaven? He is focusing at your destiny. How can I ferry him his destiny? Remember, every battle we face in this world, every war we face in this world, the, as Christian, the aim is to make sure you fail to reach the destiny, the kingdom of the living God. May you be blessed as you purpose to persevere and endure hardship as a Christian and a saint of the living God because the Bible says there is a payback in the book of Revelation that you will receive crown of life and there is eternal life. There is payback. Remember Jesus had payback even after, after enduring and with so many saints in the Bible, the same happened to them when they endured. May you be blessed.